Good morning, Misfits. You are tuning into another episode of the Misfit Podcast. On today's show, we are going to be taking a deep dive into how to crush online qualifier workouts. There is a bit of an Easter egg, not an Easter egg. There's a bit of a preview to another episode towards the end of this, something that I've been doing a deep dive into on my own um, in terms of of mindset and, and how we can take Uh, actionable steps to change the way that our our mind works throughout life training and in today's context online qualifier workouts but before we do that a little life chat hello hunter what's going on what's up homie ran a mile still hard yeah dude that's a just a mile special thing just a quick mile a little bit more yeah (laughs) we're in uh six to seven minutes dude fuck yeah, I was luckily, luckily held under that, but uh, yeah, I don't remember the last time I ran a like one mile time trial. Kind of had mm. the low expectation, I guess, maybe for myself of just if I could just if I stay under six, then like not bad, but felt decent today. And plus, like you, you know, like the affiliate four hundred meter loop, it's like maybe it's 400, maybe it's not some sharp turns here and there. You got to go over the river and through the woods and the parking lot and that sort of thing. But, um, yeah, we're in day two of affiliate games week and, uh, turns out a hundred deadlifts on Monday, uh, really prime the hamstrings for a one mile, (laughs) one mile time trial on Tuesday. So fuck, I bet, I bet it's fun every once in a while as a crossfitter to be reminded that you have a posterior chain. That's so great. (laughs) Fortunately, I use mine. At least when I'm deadlifting, and oh, I've fuck uh, off, quit bragging. My uh, well, my it's been a long journey because I I spent like two years with aggravated knees, which turned out to just be tight quads because mm. you know if you don't squat with your ass and your hamstrings, and you, you got to squat with something. Yep. But uh, yeah, and we had some good PRs at the affiliate. We had one of our, I'd say, uh, seat more seasoned members uh, on the on the age spectrum, one of our older women who, uh, could not walk without like significant pain before she started doing CrossFit and kind of like, um, can't remember if she had to use assistance of some sort, but she's the type who was like getting up and down, like God forbid she fell on the ground, like getting off the ground might've been, a yeah. might've been a, a really difficult chore. And, uh, Lo and behold, five days a week of constantly varied functional movement at high intensity, uh, and she ran a twelve twenty mile, uh, like ran it, which is Incredible. fucking insane. Yeah. yeah, told Mark our morning, morning flagship coach to make sure folks understood the, the implication of something like that. Because who the fuck knows how many years to her life she added by, by, just being able to run a mile, and then some other folks who. Who hammered it as well so and it's really cool too because she's she's a, a great member of the community she's got a good attitude she's coachable like like if you show up open-minded and and just almost ready to accept the crossfit um, yeah you can make some serious changes because it's like th- the 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 idea of your everyday person sees maybe the crossfit games or whatever it is and is terrified to come into a place like this even though this is an extremely welcoming environment. It's hard to know that before you pass. Yeah, absolutely. So you think of her instance where, you know, there was a cane involved with her moving around and then now she's running a mile and just, just the, the ability to, to be open to, to coming in and doing it and changing your life is absolutely incredible. So yeah, her husband, husband came in first. He was a, did beginner. I don't remember if he did beginners with me, but I, I coached him quite a bit when he got started and then he, uh, finally convinced his, his wife to come in and, and it's the roles have reversed. She's a five times a week member. And Anthony, if you're listening to this, she's fucking, she's out cycling you, man. She's, she's, <laughs> she's ahead. She's ahead right now. But love that. Uh, no, it's awesome. Really cool to hear. And uh, yeah, just life life changing for her for sure, whether she knows it or not. And there's there's kind of two parts to this because it's like CrossFit works. So 
we can have our hat tip to the, to the methodology and yeah. the things that we've been taught through that. And then the gym and misfit affiliate programming and, and knowing that someone like you who over the course of your life have probably been plus or minus 15 seconds below and 15 seconds above a six minute mile at any yep. given time to know that, you know, we do run and we do have, you know, a phase bias where you'll go in and, and run, you know, once a week or something like that. But over the course of the year, um, especially living in a place like Maine, you have to lean very heavily on the idea of GPP. So like, yep. you don't really know what's going to happen. You know, you're not like a seasoned track star. Like, you know exactly what your splits are supposed to be or all that. You just yeah. go out and run a mile and you still got a sub six mile, which is yep. fucking great. Yeah. And I think anytime those tests in, in my head for me personally, and I like, even though I've done it enough times, like I've gone into a, you know, a benchmark or, a, you know, a one rep max lift or whatever. And in my head, it's like, I'd be really happy with this. And this is typically, a, you know, it's, it's good. It's, it's good for me, but it's certainly not like excellent by any, by any stretch of the imagination for again, relative to my previous scores, times, whatever. But, um, to be able to come in, you know, random Tuesday in October and still and still run a, a pretty quick mile with all the other stuff that we do. Other other things are still improving. Like overall fitness is still, you know, certainly not dropping. But uh, and I'm you know it's just affiliates five Monday through Friday affiliate class and that's it. So anybody who tells you you can't do it, I have wrong. A, I have a very me story relating to a mile time trial. Oh, um, oh, I've like run a sub this. six mile once in my life. Um, I was training to try and qualify for the 2012 Northeast regional. And I was, <laughs> um, I was writing my, I was writing my own programming, but like reaching out to like subject matter experts at the time. So Brian McKenzie was the, the CrossFit endurance guy. And I just reached out to him. I sent him my programming and his recommendation was to alternate running sessions with and without a vest. So I was running like mm. 400s and 800s and shit in a vest, which I yeah. should not have been doing. So yeah. I'm just going to throw, I needed to go in the opposite direction. I needed to go run long, slow yeah. um, for my, for my strengths and weaknesses. Um, so I ran a mile time trial very early in the morning i had a 200 meter stretch down and back because i knew i needed to like know how to pace yeah um i ran 800 meters in about 230 roughly yeah sorry this is this is the actual mile or this is a this is a the actual workout. mile this okay is, this so is we're on pace for a five yeah this is tracking so far mile. yeah yes i run a two minute 400 yeah and some part of that was still at the five minute pace. Yeah, so now we're still at four and a half. And just in some off quick. part of me was in like a very bad place. Like yep. I actually think that I ran hard for a thousand meters. Yeah. And then was a, contemplating quitting as I was running back for 200 because my heart rate was probably at 200. Right. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, no, you have to run the fucking mile. You got to have your baseline. You got to do whatever. And I think I probably got to the 1400 meter mark. So with 200 meters to run back in the other direction where yeah. like if I ran it in about 40 seconds, 40, 45 seconds, I would still be sub six. So I fucking turn on the jets. I sprint 200 and I run a 559 mile with yeah. <laughs> two and a half and Three. So you, you snapped <laughs> off two one fifteens. I want to know what my first four hundred was. That's one really one ten <laughs> one twenty two minutes, yes. and then a quick one thirty. That's the yeah. cl the real classic. Oh, it was so bad too, because I remember it being because it was early. That in the sounds morning, terrible. You it body being like oh, just like, muscle like kind of cold. Tony Horton muscle confusion over the course of one mile. <laughs> yeah. The 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 like throat like humid wet cold air like oh. if you're from new england or you're from a place that gets cold and is humid you know what that means it just shreds your lungs 
So I was like absolutely dying. And I mean, who knows back then what my warm up was? Like I had to walk down a hill and then another hundred meters to get to my spot. <laughs> yeah. Like 18 so, seconds on a bike and some oh, progenics force. You're ready to yeah, roll. Like who the fuck knows what that was. Yeah, that was, <laughs> that was rough. That was real bad. Fuck. And that was back when I could not. So I had a 559 mile sort of, um, but I could not do Maffetone running. I could run like a couple hundred meters at a time and then I'd have to stop and walk. Yeah. <laughs> fuck that's incredible yeah energy systems are fucking on point <laughs> yeah no shit in a, in a oh real good spot goodness um my actual life chat uh oh i'm getting fucking strong again with that pressing like, yeah it took me a while i'm on Let you're getting yoked this. up over there kid when i so so my my way of like making sure that i also get my heart rate up a little is i do zone two rest on machines in between yeah and then i get in the sauna afterwards and yesterday I saw myself in the glass on the sauna and I was like, fuck, you want some kid? Dude, you want to fight? Dude, I love that. I like walking by my car shirtless. I'm just like, is Dude. that fucking Kalipa in the mirror right there? My, the little panes of glass in my garage door, something about them. I could really be fucking convex, and real, yes, convex yes, mirrors. Just gigantic. like gigantic. God. So I put the assault bike up close to it. And I'm like, They're fucking D cups, motherfucker. <laughs> All right. So I'm on one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm on like my seventh or eighth rotation through of the same three type of sessions. So sets of five, speed work, sets of three. Speed volume heavy, right? Yeah. Um, and I can say without a doubt that like sets of 10 – at like 115, 120 or easier than they were at 90. Sets of five at like 150 mm. or easier than they were at like 115. <clears throat> like it took a while. And the reason that I brought it up as live chat is because I watch people online talk about like we have the volume squat cycle right now. You have no clue what it has in store for you each day. Like, yeah. I like a lot of people are like, oh, I like the fives, I like the fours, I like the threes. Not every time you don't. It's such a mind fuck going through that. And like, there's something about like surrendering to linear progression and a strength cycle. It's like, I'm going to show up, I'm going to work hard. I'm going to do what I can to hit my percentages. But these like expectations of like, like your first set on a day that you're super sore and your watch tells you you're going to die ends up being easy. And you're like, uh, what? Like, how is that possible? And then you have a day where you slept great. You're eating great. You're coming yep. off a rest day and the barbell just doesn't want to move, especially with the squat. So I think you, you can go in the opposite direction too, right? Like to, I, today, perfect example is some like, Hey, the hundred deadlifts yesterday, feeling a little bit creaky one mile time trial that requires a, a certain maybe mental approach to it. Yep. And with, you know, too many expectations or just you know, instead of just coming in and be like, I'm just going to give it what I've got today. Yeah. Um, it can be definitely be a little bit freeing and lo and behold, like half, at least half the time it works out in your favor. The rabbit hole that I referenced earlier that I've been going down with the mental side, we might have some sort of explanation as to why you are able to do, you know how I always ask you, I'm like, how do you just get the score you're supposed to? What the fuck is your problem? Yeah. Like, you don't seem to him and haw inside of conditioning pieces. You just mm. do what it is, and then you come out the other side pretty close to what you would expect to get. Um, so that's a teaser yeah. for, for kind of later on in the episode. Ooh, Easter egg. <laughs> Easter egg. All right. I'm not doing any online qualifiers. Surprise. I'm feeling <laughs> stronger. Yeah. And I fucking love it. <laughs> that's my life chat. it's three days a week right i wanted it to be but i'm too old for that uh i was doing 48 hours of rest and i had to bump it up to 72 so like it's two and a half days a week roughly. do you think that's more a function of your like age and just what you're able to do from a fitness recovery standpoint just like life or do you think that's more a function of your like athlete type so being Both. somebody who so like both faster sure. twitch probably yeah. needs a little bit more recovery yeah. both yeah yeah that's that's what's like fascinating and also kind of unfair about speed work like i think i could add 10 to 20 pounds to any lift with eight weeks of speed work but it's because i can already move fast yeah 
like it, that has like a huge effect on my training or in, in terms of, of making my one rep max go up. Have you done any skiing in between sets, like upper body, like zone two that type has stuff? Been like, I'll get, I'll get a message from a remote client. That's like, all right, I'm committing to, I'm going to start doing the flush stuff that you guys write. Like I'm going to do the flushing in between sets. Mm. And I'm like, listen, there's the whole, like it originally started very much as we're putting these in here because athletes don't stay in their body in between sets. They go to their cell phone, they get out of it, they get distracted, and then they yep. wonder why, especially in a complex lift like a snatch. But then doing this and doing some other strength progressions, like if I do heavy sets of five and I ski for 90 seconds to two minutes in between on a one damper, just nice and slow, I feel stronger, I feel significantly mm -hmm. stronger in between. And as a like devout meathead i'm like if i can lift more weight i'm gonna fucking do it yeah i'll drink the extra fucking can of fucking whatever i'll, I'll do what i gotta do and that's just one of the things that helps a lot when yeah. my back is bothering me going from picking up barbells and and dumbbells and shit to the skier or the rower sometimes fucks with me a little bit so that's why i've been on the echo bike a little bit more recently um but yeah yeah the, the skier in between pressing is crazy mm. it feels so much better in between reps yeah like significantly better um, that's interesting so, yeah i've definitely noticed a, a, a bit there so yeah the the if if someone if someone wants to go way overboard and specialize or at least see the program feel free to shoot me a message and i'll send it to you but um i think a lot of athletes younger higher level of gpp could do it every 48 hours but then like what the f why are you pressing why are you doing nine sets of pressing a week <laughs> not nine sets Nine. It's way more than that. Maybe that's what I need. I just yeah. start. Oh, Try it. Try All right. It. It's great. It's real fun. One of my um, friends. One of my. Sorry. Last side no, tangent. Just because we talked about it. One of my friends has really. He's like, dude. Just do. He's a bodybuilding type athlete. Likes to. That's yeah. his form of fitness. Not a big cardio guy. Did CrossFit for like three weeks. Sam, if you're listening, love you, buddy. <laughs> he's like, I need to live vicarious through you vicariously through you so i need you to do like the highest volume bodybuilding program and just inflate and i'm like <laughs> bro it's like it's like i'm curious to see what would happen but yeah. i don't know that my like my psyche could handle the a loss in like gpp fitness and maybe it wouldn't maybe it would actually like make me more durable doing like a bunch of bodybuilding stuff but um it's trading right it's yeah. like like what it's all these things happen like you're throwing yourself into a meat grinder and you're going through all these different compartments like what what gets spit out on the other side because like there are people who are in the opposite right that are like i'm strong as hell and my conditioning's not there and they come out the other side with a higher level of gpp but sometimes they don't think they did because they're not as strong as they were before. yeah and it's like you don't need to be that fucking strong yeah like, that's not going to help you. So yeah, that would be interesting. Like, like I've done a few random either shoulder to overhead type things or gymnastics, upper body things recently in CrossFit. And it's yeah. so funny. It's like, yeah, that, that's what happens when you specialize. Nice. It's even like, like with the gymnastics, it doesn't even matter what my, what my body weight is. It's like, no, this is literally all we do is yeah. just press either overhead <laughs> in the bench press or somewhere in between in the incline. All right. Um, Something that's top of mind because I've, I've got some athletes going through the fittest of the coast qualifier and it's like the fall is very much like qu online qualifier season for a lot of people. Wadapalooza coming up. Wadapalooza, fittest experience. A lot of people just did Crash Crucible. There's there's a lot of different um, Dubai's actually going on right now as well, I believe. Um, and obviously if 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 it's one of my athletes then all of these things that we're going to talk about today are talked about on a regular basis they're talked about year round but ah man i i see some i see some things and you're just not you're not quite getting it right um in terms of one of these categories at least so we're going to kind of work our way down through here and just talk about what you can do to actually like crush online qualifier workouts. What are the things that you can, you know, you can get out your fucking, you know, yellow legal pad and make some check boxes and be like, what are these, what are the things that I can attack that I can control here? Um, because otherwise if it's just you're a ball of stress and then you go do the workout and you 
you know, your round splits are like starts at 90 seconds and ends at nine minutes for a round, then obviously there's going to be a problem there. So um, question number one is how do you choose what day to do them and how do they fit into your actual training? Um, the, the first part of the question, choosing what day to do them isn't always your choice, but a lot of times now it's like one, it's kind of a one a week thing yeah. and you have a stretch of time. They don't really try to stress you out like a quarterfinals or something like that, where you're, you're jamming everything together. So I'm always thinking coming off a rest day, like if we're in the off season, we're lifting weights, we're doing volume squatting, we're doing high volume machines, stuff like that coming off a rest day. Um, and preferably going into like a weekend day or whatever your day off is like the kind of thing where you could have a longer build up to the actual workout itself. Yeah. Um, I think is, is super important. Yeah. I like either coming off of the rest day or, um, I mean, we still suggest a primer, you know, primer day before an open workout, a lot of times athletes and, I find personally like Mondays aren't always my best training days. I, I rest Saturday, Sunday, and then going into the gym on Monday, it's almost like the the day that you knock off some rust. Um, yeah. So I think either coming off a rest, this is where you have to know yourself as an athlete and, and probably especially leading into a qualifier, knowing when you're going to do a qualifier, like pay attention in the weeks leading up. Like, do you feel... Do you feel better, snappier, faster, or more refreshed right after a rest day? Or are you going to be better off coming off, you know, hey, Thursday is my rest day. Friday, instead of doing the actual programming that's written, it's a it's a primer day. We've got an article on the website that says, you know, how to how to write your own primer day. That's also something that's super easy with a message in Discord or something like that. Um, and then the next day coming in and, and hammering the the qualifier workout. But I think first, the, the first part of that is knowing what works better for you. Cause you're right. Some people are going to feel better yeah. coming off a rest day, maybe more mentally refreshed or just that's like a psychological thing of like, yep, I just rested. Therefore I'm fresh. Um, and other folks, you know, maybe, do, maybe you do benefit from a, a kind of a partial training day the day before that qualifier. But that's what yeah, I would I say think... for the timing. Yeah, I would say if this is your Super Bowl, primer day, for sure. If yeah. this is like, we got a lot of fucking work to do, and I'm probably going to qualify for this competition, sure. a lot of work to do in the off season, then I like it in that way. The one thing that I will say about not having a primer day um, just due to life and, and off season training is the the morning movement thing and not in the traditional sense, but like getting up and getting on to a like an assault bike at home or you know going into the gym early you know even before you have breakfast or something and knocking off 20 minutes where like you're sweating for the last five like crazy slow kind of building up to that um that seems to knock the rust off pretty well yeah uh, incredible machine for blood flow but you don't really need to be like feeling spry when you get on the bike like you might need to be to to get on a row or a ski or, or something like that and if you're 22 years old then fuck off and choose whatever machine you want yeah You'll probably feel fantastic um so that's what i would sort of put out there as like if you need to knock the rust off go ahead and do that and that has nothing to do with your warm-up for the actual workout that's just like okay now my body knows that that this is going to be like a we're going to get after it today a little bit so yep. that's one one way to to get into that and then how do they fit into your training this is highly dependent on how much volume you normally do and then the cns demand of the actual workout these workouts do something very different to you versus even if you go hard on a random tuesday when there's more hubbub surrounding it you are going to feel the difference. So in an instance with like a remote client, what I'll do is let's say they're training Saturday, Sunday, I will put it first on the Saturday after the morning movement, after the nice long competition style warm up, and then sort of a la carte after that. So it's like yep. you have two or three lifts that you're supposed to perform this weekend. Um, if there was interference with the actual workout, we would just get rid of one of them. That's fine. But like, okay, can you get another lift in or can you get a lift in? Fantastic. You did that. How are you feeling now? 
I feel like shit. I feel beat up. Okay. Go flush and be out the door. I feel fantastic. Okay. Go hit a, you know, a bitch work session or something like that. And then the same goes for Sunday, still a la carte, still doing this based on feel. Right. Cause like the idea of overreaching and super compensation, it, it's not like no matter what drive yourself down into the ground. Like if you're already feeling a little beat up and you're normally doing, uh, two lifts and a conditioning or a lift and two conditioning and you want to lop one of those off, that's totally fine. Like yeah. do that, get your rest day, get back after it on Tuesday. So it's really about the total central nervous system demand of those two days being somewhat close to what you're nor like, like what you're used to do. Yeah. I mean, I think an online qualifier is just, it's somewhere between a normal training day and like a true competition day. If you were at a, you know, you were at an in-person event, you wouldn't, go do the two or three or even if it's just one workout one event in that day and then go back to the hotel gym and be like yeah i gotta get my other my other shit in right it's like that's that's obviously too much the online qualifier like you alluded to more often than not and realistically it should be more demanding as far from an effort perspective and just a an intensity perspective than maybe a typical training piece and for that reason, it's perfectly acceptable to, you know, like you said, imagine you've got, you do a lift and two Metcons. It's maybe it's just the qualifier and then a lift or the qualifier and then a skill piece. And then the next day, like you said, it's the same thing. Maybe you make something up that you missed that, you know, you need to do. Um, but it is definitely a little bit, a little bit more a la carte, I guess is the like you said, yeah. is the best way to put it. So, and we rely, especially this time of year, we rely so heavily on stimulus. Like, I don't want to do that. Like, okay, we can make we can make a swap on your movement. We can change, you know, the especially with bitch work. Like, we can just change the machine. We can make yeah. a multi machine. Like, yeah. we can make it a bit more palatable to go in and get the thing done. Yeah. Um, as we get closer to the season, that's not necessarily the case. But why would you be doing, you know, why would you be doing an online qualifier during semifinals prep or something like that? That doesn't make any sense. Um, so where do they go? How do they fit into your training? Check that box. Next is CNS hygiene leading up to the day. Um, and I don't think we have the time in the episode to actually dig into all the different things that you can do for CNS hygiene, but just understanding that stress is stress. So if you spend your entire week just buzzing a little bit more because the qualifier is coming. Whether you're excited, whether it's, you know, adrenaline, whether you're seeing it as stress and anxiety, whatever it is, the exercise portion of your stress is easy to measure. You're used to that. But the, like, a mental, emotional output, whether it's, like, my job is, is a lot, my, something's going on in my personal life, whatever it is, you need to pay close attention to how you're feeling throughout the week and do that same sort of style of a la carte leading up to it as well. So you get your, say you've got Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday are your training days. That would be a week where I would let an athlete actually listen to a device telling them that they're tired. If we're in one of our six out of nine weeks of overreaching, your phone's not allowed to tell you a fucking thing. Okay. <laughs> so so are, you're, you're, you're alluding to like an app, like whoop HRV, telling you that you're a 12 percent recovery like go take recovery a recovery yeah. score whatever if you see and it's important you're measuring yourself against yourself you're not measuring yourself against well, i'm always at like a 60 on whoop i don't even remember exactly how whoop works but it gives you a recovery percentage right yeah it's a yeah. percentage score and you want to be in a, at 100 because it's you know, be in the week. in the green, yeah, yeah, yeah. Th that's not necessarily the case. So you're comparing yourself to yourself. That would be when you have done your lift metcon skill, and you're deciding if you're going to add another piece. I'm actually recovering great, feeling fantastic. Go for it. That sort of thing. After a full rest day, you know, with it with a flush and paying close attention to mobility and things like that, you're going to be totally fine. But if you're feeling a little bit more beat up for whatever reason leading into that, and this is very important to you, that would be when you rely a little bit more on intensity over volume. Um, yeah, I think the the CNS hygiene aspect is you got to remember all of those things come out of the same gas tank. So you you alluded to stress, whether it's work personal relationship, actual stress from the, the workout or the qualifier itself. Um, 
you might not view that in the same way as stress when you're working out. And like you said, you're, you're kind of used to that. You, you know what stress from training feels like, but it all comes out of the same gas tank. So if you're feeling like shit because of work that like, even maybe it doesn't necessarily impact your performance in the workouts. It's you're definitely going to like, you know, whether the, I would imagine that your recovery is going to be a bit lower, um, just having having that compounding stress because it does come all all come out of the same gas tank. Um, when it comes to like, I think just the part of the re I like I like athletes doing getting qualifiers out of the way quickly, usually for that reason. And depending on how seriously they're taking it, whether they're somebody who's just uh, the odds are if somebody knows that they're going to qualify, the qualifier is less stressful because yeah. by nature of just knowing that they're not going to or they they will qualify. Somebody who maybe is on the fence, it is their Super Bowl, whatever, I like them to get the qualifier done sooner than later. One, it just kind of like everybody knows that feeling after an open workout, like, okay, I did it. We'll worry about the retest later, but that feeling of, you know, it's off your shoulders, it's off the plate. We can then go back to the drawing board and say like, well, could we go faster? Could we shave some time here? Could we add a few more reps or another round with a better strategy or something like that? But I like the idea of getting it done earlier in the in the kind of window of time, whatever that is, whatever you're provided. And then just having, then you can have some time to, um, to maybe reassess and re-engage later on. Cause a lot of it too is just the unknown element of the workout, even though you've probably done, I don't know, fucking six dozen workouts with the same movements that you're about to embark on with the qualifier, the, the unknown element tends to, you know, mess with athletes a little bit more than it, it needs to. And nutrition and hydration. Um, Nutrition, I would say the simplest way to put this is if you are a competitive athlete, you should know what you, what a calorie deficit, maintenance calories, and a calorie surplus look like. So if you maintain your body weight pretty well, around 3,000 calories a day, and you can lose weight, you know, a, a pound a week, you know, at a time um, at 2750, and you can add, you know, a little bit of muscle at 3250, like... Those are things that you should know. So we'll just put that out there in general. Um, and you want to make sure that you are hovering around that maintenance calorie number. Like you're, you're going to know how you're going to feel, what you're going to do. We've done an episode very recently that you can go check out if you want more in-depth information. But like don't get weird with it. Everyone knows that advice. But like. If, if you train in a certain way and you feel like you're fueling for performance and it's working, then you already know what you're doing. Like yep. that's important and just pay close attention to it. On the hydration side, something that people pay way less attention to, which is kind of crazy to me. Um, baseline, half of your body weight in ounces, you weigh 200 pounds, drink a hundred ounces of water a day. Um, but that's the general recommendation for someone who's not active. Um, so we're looking at somewhere in the neighborhood of adding 30 ounces to that, um, for every hour of sweating somewhere in that neighborhood, something like that. So, um, try to, try to get to the point where you know how much hydration that you need. Like that would be one way to, to really look at it. <coughs> one thing that would be helpful. If you're not paying attention to those things, if you go in under fueled, dehydrated CNS in the shitter, like that's why we're bringing all of these things up. You can completely change your score. Like you're going to see a, a leaderboard where there's, you know, there's going to be workouts where everyone's jammed together, regardless of fitness level, just because of the stimulus time domain, et cetera. So it's like, how do you get those extra reps? Um, and it's going to be all the things that we talk about today, but like setting yourself up to succeed before you start is incredibly important. Yeah. All right. Um, maybe our favorite part here, maybe the part where we feel elitist, um, audit the workout. What is the fucking workout? Come on, come on, yeah. come on, come on, come on. We, we have to know how to do this or we have to have someone in our corner that can help us with this. Like this is the moment where I'm supposed to be wearing glasses, I think. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, first things first, what will stop me? Look at the workout. Think about your workout history. Try not to have your qualifier brain on. 
what's going to stop you within the workout? Are there large sets of movements that need to be broken up that if you tried to go unbroken on and then went into the next round, you'd be screwed? Okay. Very important piece of information there. Um, are you doing a movement that requires so much of your fitness that you're going to be gasping for air if you do it unbroken or at a pace that you shouldn't something that's incredibly important there and then um probably the easiest workout to beat people who are fitter than you on is the merry-go-round style top of mind because that was the first workout of the fittest of the coast that I talked to some athletes about here. Uh, let's see, where are you? Workout one is a 20 minute AMRAP. I like it. 24 calorie row into no, three like rounds of 12 wall balls and six alternating dumbbell snatch. That says fucking cardio and merry-go-roundy as you could possibly get. So row, three rounds, 20 minutes. Six, back to the rower. So Standard wall ball yep. and Standard dumbbell, ball ball, the 70 and pound dumbbell. dumbbell. Yep. Um, it is a 70, sorry. Oh, no, 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 standard. 50, 35. Um, 12 wall balls and six dumbbell snatches. Hey, we're not. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. Yep. <laughs> All right. Okay. Just checking. Uh, when we audit the workout, um, if you want a private audit from us, you shoot us a DM <laughs> and we'll, we'll, we'll tell you how we feel about it. But um, that is part of the game. Part of the game is an oddity within a workout, something different, right? Like it's your job to figure out what you're supposed to do there. Now, I've seen multiple people posting that this workout got so bad, which like <laughs> cardio workouts fucking hurt if you do them correctly, that they had to put down the wall ball. For 12? Now, okay, so sometimes merry-go-round workouts, the like limiter movement, the thing that will sort of dictate the entire workout is something like a double under, which we've talked about this before. And it's complicated. Some people out there fucking bouncing around, twirling the rope, like thinking about God knows what, and there's, you know, fucking dolphins out there wiggling through their reps and getting their heart rate up to 180. It's a crazy movement. That is not what's in this workout. This workout has a rower in it where you row at a pace that allows you to get back to the rower as fast as possible. That is the strategy for the entire workout. Yeah. Now we can dig deeper. We can say, how fast can you row for 20 minutes, right? Those other movements, for some athletes, it actually might be a little easier to do those than it is to do the row. That's not very common. A lot of times there's a barbell movement and you're just, you're going to get your heart rate higher, like no matter what. Um, so that is part of it, but it's still exactly the same. How hard can I row, right? So you're going to start just sniffing that 20 minute time trial kind of pace in a workout like this. Probably back off of it a little bit because the cumulative effect of leg drive in the wall ball and pulling on the dumbbell, like after a certain period of time, yeah. um, also would much rather have an athlete like improve on their splits. Like if you're like, oh, this is fucking, you know, I'm whatever, I'm nine minutes in, this is a joke. Let's yeah. turn this up. You're not gonna, you're not, you're still gonna get a very, very good score relative to your fitness level doing that. Um, so seeing that people posted that, that's why this episode is exists. It's like there are a lot of things that we can do, but if you but if our strategy doesn't make sense, then it's going to be a problem. So again, what will stop me? Like what what is the thing that could be an issue here? And the only thing that would stop you in the workout that we just referenced is rowing too hard. Yeah, that's it. Is you being an asshole on exactly. the rower. <laughs> yeah. Um and you know, these are fights that we used to get into with some of our higher level athletes that like rowing. It's like, it doesn't matter. No one cares that you can row at 1300 calories per hour in this workout. And then your transitions are trash. Like you're doing, yeah. you're either doing something or you're doing nothing. And one of those is better than the other. Yeah. Right. Like 
you could, if someone decided to row hard in this workout from the beginning, you could crush them at like 800, 900 cows per hour just by fucking being like, I will be back on this rower as fast as possible. And then I'm just going to fucking coast again, get my heart rate back down. Yeah. Like we, we see this, we see this in the open and, and quarterfinals all the time. Um, timing is incredibly important here. There's a bit of a know your enemy type of situation. Um, so I would say the problem with this conversation with both of us is we're both mathematically inclined. Mm -hmm. I know that there are some people who are not, there's some really smart people who hate numbers. So some really dumb people that hate numbers too. Yeah. 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 But like, (laughs) yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, it's just, it's a, it's weird. Right. Um, so I, you I either like, need to know what I'm talking about or what Hunter's <laughs> about to talk about, or yeah. you need to find someone who can help you, but go ahead. No, I was just going to, I honestly, I kind of like timing first. I like trying, cause a yeah, lot of, for absolutely. a lot of athletes, yep. for a lot of athletes too, like, especially if you don't think like that, it's like, it's not even so much like what's going to slow me down. It's like, Hey, like how long is this supposed to take? Therefore, what is my effort level look like? Then it's, to me, then that, then the step yeah. is like, what's going to slow me down. So not to like, so a little bit of semantics here, but whether it's, you know, I think it's funny. We do, we do like you like to do, it's a lot easier to do timing for MFT level semifinals, CrossFit level games athletes, because the, they the speed at which they do certain, yeah, the speed at which they do certain movements is very reliable and they have a high enough fitness level that we know, like there's, there's a way, way smaller spread of potential times, you know, 50 burpee box jump overs, like for semifinals and games level athletes, the spread on that's going to be pretty tight. We say 50 burpee box jump overs for an affiliate level athlete. Now we're going to see like that, that band just got six times as wide right of fast and slow times and um i i think that i i found that a good like general rule is i like for affiliate uh, for affiliates i think in terms of reps per minute um so on that like the row workout 25 was it 24 calories how many for the women 20 18 20 24 across the board so um at for the affiliate level in that in a 20 minute workout, I'm going to say like, okay, that's probably a minute 15 to a minute and a half, uh, for it's most 90 seconds if you're holding a two minute pace, which is pretty good. Yeah. Which isn't bad. So maybe, maybe, you know, and for, if it's a blanket blanket assessment, it's like, yep, that's probably a 90 second row for your MFT and games level athletes. We can get a little bit tighter and say like, okay, they're going to row. We know that they're going to, we know what their five K is. And therefore we know what the equivalent, pace in calories per hour is and we can situate right around there which means your 24 cals is going to spit out you spit you out at you know one one eleven or something like that so we can get really in the in the weeds with a with an athlete who's going to reliably um you know row at the same pace move at the same pace given you know depending on the workout so uh, i think the timing aspect is really important because it also gets the athlete in the mindset of like okay what what am i like, oh, it turns out the, you know, if it's, if it's two rounds of that thing for time, it's like, fuck, I have to go very, very hard on the row because everybody's going to go unbroken on the wall balls and snatches versus a 20 minute effort where it's like, okay, I need to actually temper this a little bit and just minimize my, my standing around and transition time. So I like the, the timing aspect because it just gives athletes a better idea of what they're up against it in my in my opinion the only caveat would be if it's like hey there's 30 mu- it's the standard there's 30 muscle ups for time it's like okay well now it doesn't matter how long it is we have to approach 30 muscle ups for time a specific way so sure um, yeah essentially knowing knowing your outputs before you start so like a lot of mm-hmm. workouts it would be really helpful for even a novice athlete to know this is going to end up being 100 wall balls and 150 calories and et cetera, right? Like when we see that on the other side of it, it's like I kind of know how hard I can go with that sort of volume. That's a lot yeah. of volume. Yep. So the idea of me like getting after it, but when a programmer tricks you with bite-sized chunks of something, you're like, I mean, 
It's a merry-go-round. Just get in there and get after it. And it's like on a Tuesday or a Wednesday, like, okay, that's fine. You're probably going to get a pretty good workout, especially if we're talking about an affiliate level athlete, but like you're going to get dusted by someone who's just a little bit smarter than you. If you don't know the totality of what you're looking at, that's yeah. the thing. Um, here's what's great about this. If you have either a mathematically inclined brain or a friend who will help you, or you just go to discord and ask us, we'll, we'll let you know. Um, every level of athlete in the world thinks it's important to put their workouts on YouTube. They're all there. Every level, no Olsen's workouts, the fucking like epitome of rep speed. Like what is happening? <laughs> This is nine rope climbs in a minute, you know, whatever, like just absurd stuff. And then someone that's like a YouTuber being like, here's my fitness journey doing open 21.2. If you do a little bit of digging, you can find someone working out and you can just literally click on, okay, they're about to do 15 moderate weight deadlifts. They're starting at one minute. They finished them at a minute 27. You can get a pretty good understanding of how long certain things take. Yeah. So that, that like reps per second, like how many seconds a rep takes would be super high level like Hunter mentioned. And then can I just have a rough estimate of what the total volume of this workout is going to be if I go based more on like how many can I get in a minute? That yeah. sort of thing. Um, so paying attention to that is incredibly important. Got to know your enemy. Um in terms of the timing and the volume of it and probably a good representation of the difference in the way that Hunter and I think he's a bit more, you are a bit more linear. Like you're absolutely right that we should figure that out first before deciding like what's going to stop me. That's yeah. a, a very good order. Um, one thing that is even more important in terms of attacking a workout like this and any other one is identifying whether it's golf scoring or game style scoring. Mm. It is really hard to, to work with athletes and have them switch mindsets for these different things. When you're doing golf scoring, when you're doing first place gets one point and a hundredth place gets a hundred points and you want as, as low of a score as possible, like you cannot bomb a workout. You cannot, yeah. you will be done. You can crush everyone in every other workout. And if there's a heavy lift, if there's a merry-go-round where you think 1350 cals per hour is smart at the beginning, et cetera, you're going to pay for it in a way that is borderline unfair. You need to strategize the shit out of workouts that you feel like are damage control. Like that is incredibly important. And even workouts that are closer to home runs for you, you still have to be smart. You still have to really think about the way that you're doing them. Unless you are vying for like the top spot and you want to take some chances just for fun in a qualifier, um, <clears throat> you really need to pay very close attention to like damage control moments because they can completely screw you up. Game style scoring, 100 points for first place and however many points for um, you know 20th place, that's totally different. Like you want to, you want to take some swings. You want to, you, you kind of have to, you yeah. got to go out there and take some chances in moments, especially in damage control workouts. You almost want to like fucking really swing for the fences. If you think it's going to be bad, what's, what, what is there to lose? Yeah. You can That's only take so few points, right? Exactly. Go. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so those are two very different mindsets and, and we have to deal with quarterfinals athletes like damage control and then semifinals is coming and that doesn't exist. And I need you within fucking seven weeks to completely change your mindset on the way that you attack competitive CrossFit workouts. So something very important to keep in mind, golf scoring is the most common that you're going to see. If someone yeah, I was going to say how often competition we, corner. Yeah. Do we ever see like the game style scoring in non in person events? Like in person, I feel like, cause the field has to be know fixed, of. right? Cause like golf scoring Correct. makes sense for yes. a, indeterminate number of participants like, some use the p-value where you're literally like the first place sets the the standard for how many points you get right and, right and then your score is in there um i don't that's i don't really know how i feel about that for a qualifier so it is the easiest way to do it for sure yeah. um I like the so, z, z scoring topic was the hot thing for like eight minutes in crossfit remember when that everybody complained about scoring yeah 
and a lot of the people that talked about didn't even understand how it worked um so there's that let's basically need to keep the scoring in a place where people can understand how like what is happening yeah (laughs) yeah that's i mean that's Um, on that's a huge element too like leaderboard if you don't know how the fucking leaderboard works like that thing that has to be super transparent otherwise it's like how the fuck did right jim bob get ahead of me in that workout yeah um big thing in my mind is the judge and the coach uh do you have someone that will hold you to a standard without being the person that lays their head on the ground to make sure that your hip is six and a half miles below parallel um yeah. so you don't want to get dinged in your video review of course but you also don't want someone who's you know like got made fun of as a kid so they think they got to no rep everybody like we don't want that yeah um so that is important not just for the scoring and the video review and all of that but it's important because the wrong person will stress you the fuck out the way that they communicate with you the way that they no rep you the way that they either tell you what you're doing right or wrong or or don't etc so the the mental effects of that are big and then i think someone just needs to be around that understands that workout audit even if you're the one that feeds them the information it's like it's like uh you know I get a little wild when in three, two, one go happens. And I'm going to tell you like rational me is here right now. And I'm going to tell you what you need to hold me to that sort of thing. Um, so having essentially a representative for your rational brain that is there, that's like, Hey, I know it feels real good to be around at that pace right now, but it won't soon. And that's yeah. going to be a problem. Like you got to back off that sort of yeah. thing. Yeah. And those are two um, different people, right? It's yes. like the judge, yeah judge judge and coach I, I ideal world is that you have your coach or that person that can you know even if it's something so in that workout for example maybe you do like a practice round or something like that to get an idea of your splits you you then have your the coach or coach equivalent like just whiteboard with like what time should they be done round one what time should they be done round two like you know you can get you know i understand some people don't operate like that or don't you know maybe their pace isn't uh, they're not, it's not going to be consistent from start to finish, but having that one person there that is just responsible for, you know, they're not worried about the movement standard. They're worried about keeping you on your pace, doing the sets and reps that you agreed on. Maybe in the middle of the workout, you found out that was a bad plan and that, that person can, you know, at the highest level, the coach can just adjust the, the plan on the fly to keep you within the, you know, the time constraints that you want or to, to achieve the score that you were looking for. But, um, yeah, that, that person, this one person doing both jobs is really difficult. Um, and I don't, it's just not like realistic judge exists to count reps, you know, correctly with, with the, with the movement standards in mind. And then the coach is there to, you know, he's the one whispering in the ear, like, Hey, relax. Like, Let's let's not row 600 cows an hour faster than we agreed upon yeah. in round one. So two, two sure. different people for sure. Um, we've done an absurd amount of content, both written on MisfitAthletics.com, this podcast, YouTube, on warming up and cooling down. Um, you know, do your 15-minute machine where you're pay, paying attention to your heart rate. Make sure your, your activation and mobility is where it needs to be. Make sure that the movements have been practiced and feel right, feel smooth. Um, and then setting yourself up for, uh, another, another workout or to get sort of back to baseline, the, the cool down is incredibly important. Um, all right. <clears throat> the mental aspect. Um, this is, let's see, we are 53 minutes into this episode. I could potentially get to 53 hours if I don't do this right. Um, okay. so I want to present a model that I've been looking at that's that's very fascinating to people. Um, the sort of teaser of, of trying to explain Hunter getting the score he's supposed to in a workout, et cetera. Um, and I'll just start with it by saying that you have six parts of your brain that are vying for attention at all times. That just sort of sets the problem up a little bit, right? We have okay. di- these different parts of our brain that do different things um, that are helpful in certain instances and hurtful in certain instances. Um, good thing is they team up into essentially three categories. And the um, 
doctor that that came up with you know what he calls the chimp model essentially puts them into to three categories where we don't need to say things like parietal and frontal and limbic etc so the inner chimp um is your sort of primitive brain it is your catastrophic and emotional center um your human brain prefrontal cortex that that bad boy in the front that that we developed um as we evolved uh is you it's human it's uh, rational and logical it has facts it has experiences etc um and then the the final part which is kind of fascinating is the computer and it is the reference source for both the chimp and the human the chimp and the human go to the computer they go to the part of the brain that has stored experiences and things that we've done in the past and tries to get information from that to make a decision um when you are going through something so you're getting ready for this qualifier workout and you feel stress and anxiety and you just you just don't like it that's the chimp like the chimp is in charge if you don't currently enjoy the feelings that you are experiencing and the chimp is extremely strong five times the amount of neurotransmitters get kicked on when the chimp wants something done versus the human like mm -hmm. that part of your brain that is there for you to survive that literally bored a hole out through the frontal <laughs> cortex to get a piece of the action when we evolved it's like hey we need to we still need to stay alive congratulations on being smarter on figuring out that you can fucking cook your food and make fire and do all this different shit but we still have to survive so I want you to be fucking terrified at all times. I want you to make irrational decisions <laughs> in the name of survival. So um, those are the three things that we are dealing with at all times. We have ourselves, we have our inner chimp, and we have the computer. What's really cool is the human is very, str is, is very smart. So it's basically strong versus smart. Um, you can bring logic, you can bring facts, um, you just bring being clever to the equation to tell the chimp it's okay like everything's going to be fine that sort of thing um and the thing that i'm referencing with you specifically is the idea that you've trained your computer to let the human make the decisions while you're exercising mm. so the person who continues to let the chimp override in those moments you know, quitting workouts, maybe even cheating in workouts because you just don't want to do the thing anymore. So you're going to move on to the next thing, um, you know, sort of giving in mentally. That is your panic center. That is you letting the part of your brain that just wants you to survive as a, as a, as a being taking over. Probably more realistically in our context too, it's starting a workout and forgetting everything that you just decide yes. strategized about and they're just like oh all right well fuck that like 1600 cows an hour for this 20 he minute talks workout about it is how the chimp puts way too much information into the computer and that's where your gremlins live <laughs> the, like huh. he the, the, so much of the information that you have in your decision making process and the funny thing is we can all think about the parts of our life where the chimp is in charge and where the human is in charge i was thinking about we the people all... in our lives a bit but yeah got it <laughs> yeah like there 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 are moments where you're like why does this thing make me act this way when mm -hmm. i'm incredibly rational in this other place and it's because you are training the chimp to take over or you're training the human to take over and that's what the computer ends up taking on the computer is trained and that's why i think it's it's I finally feel like I have an answer to why linear progression and anything works like literally something as simple or not as simple, but as far away from bench press as like losing your temper. Can you not lose your temper one time? That's it. That is an yeah. input into the computer of the human saying everything's fucking fine. Like this is not a big deal. You are not going to die because whatever someone cut you in line or something like that like there's that's not actually a thing right 
we're not, you know, in primitive times anymore. You're not like, you know, going to have a duel with this person. <laughs> you show up at sundown with your fucking revolver. Fucking like, might. I might. <laughs> you might. Yes. I might the, bring the it chimp, back. <laughs> yeah. I might fucking, bring it back. <laughs> the chimp thinks that that is still the case. <laughs> um, and the more times that you go to the computer with the human decision, the more that is what is, is sort of in that thing. And this, this doctor works with athletes and he essentially says that training, literally exercising, getting on the exercise bike, lifting weights, doing all of these things are inputs for your computer. And when you go to the computer and say, I've done this already, I've already done this thing, mm. then you have the information that you need to execute. Yeah. So if you train and you stay within yourself and you do what you're supposed to do, you are putting more, you know, information on that hard drive that's actually going to be helpful for you yeah. to do that. That's funny. She um one of our members, so I wrote a did an email series the other week on world class fitness in a hundred words, the hundred words of fitness. And one of our longtime members, she's super consistent, replied to me directly and we we went back and forth once once or twice on she was like it's interesting like the mind doesn't get mentioned and i was like it's like uh, no you're right like 100 words is a is a finite number and like for 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 exactly 100 words glassman put together a pretty fucking good uh you know bit of bit of rhetoric on how to be fit and healthy forever but i i replied with like the the mental training that occurs is kind of baked into the cake. You come in if you're consistent enough, if you come in four to six days per week as the, you know, fitness world class fitness in hundred words suggests, like you are inevitably going to come across something that is like, I don't like this, like chimp brain activate. But if part of the magic of CrossFit is that communal aspect, it's like it's super easy for you to go into a commercial fitness gym by yourself with your headphones and be like, nah, I don't like that today. I'm just going to go do something else. Or maybe I'm going to go fuck off and, you know, not do nearly what I was going to. But the communal aspect of CrossFit says like, no, no, no. I see your name on the roster. Your name's on the whiteboard. Like I'm here. I hate this. You're here. You hate this. We're in this together. Like we're going to go do this. You accumulate enough of those reps. The reason she messaged me was because she, she did a, a 24 hour like adventure race. Um, one of her friends, uh, one of her teammates was really struggling through it. And she, um, Heather is like, she's just kind of the type of person will just put her head down and, and get after it. And I was like, you know, the, the thing is, is like the hardest thing a person has ever done is the hardest thing that they've ever done. If the hardest thing they've ever experienced is their mom saying, no, you can't have ice cream for dessert. Like, you might say like, well, that kid's fucking, that kid's a baby. Like they need to grow up. It's like, that still might be the hardest thing they've ever experienced. And gradually linear progression, whatever you experience enough of those really difficult things, a difficult workout, whatever you come, you keep plugging away. There's that desensitization element that comes in. And now we've added enough inputs into that computer to say like, when a certain workout pops up, a certain situation, a qualifier, whatever. It's like, we actually have reference points. And again, to me, this all goes back to the, the, the unknown element. It's like the reason that you're, the reason that you're anxious, the reason that this workout's making you nervous is because either, you know, exactly what it is and be like, through history, through that computer. And, you know, it's like, fuck, I know what's about to happen here. Like I've, I've done a mile time trial before. Like I know what's about to happen, but at least the unknown element is out of the equation for qualifier workouts or these specific instances. Like there is a big unknown element. So not only am I, you know, is the, am I keyed up a little bit because I'm getting ready to, to go hard. It's like, I'm going hard into something that I don't know how is going to, how this is going to feel. And just by accumulating enough reps, whether it's through linear progression or just getting into, you know, doing your training, even when you don't feel like, feel good about it. We talked about page the other week, you know, it's just like, what do you do when you don't feel like training? Like I fucking train. It's like, congratulations. Mm -hmm. What that's, that's another input into the computer that we can use, you know, in our favor, in the, in the more, you know, analytical, less emotional center side of our brain. Like you do that enough times, like 
you do desensitize yourself to 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 that discomfort to the unknown or whatever and lo and behold like crossfit does a pretty good job of of toughening people up for lack of a better term yeah and i mean it's not in the it's not in the hundred words but one of his most famous sayings is the greatest adaptation to crossfit takes place between the ears and yeah some of that is like, is it chicken or egg? Is it cause or effect? Like, like that sort of thing. Like, like, are we going in attempting to change our brain or do we go in to do the fitness and our brain changes because we did it? That yeah. sort of thing. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's what's like, there's, there's too many layers to, there's no way that he knew. Like, it was just like, yeah, I mean, why, why are you either a runner or a lifter? Like, why aren't people trying to be strong and cardiovascular? Like, like a lot of the what feels obvious now about it, I think he probably thought of um, just from like how to be the healthiest human. But then there's just like you go you go out into the gym and on a Monday you feel embarrassed because you can't do X, Y, and Z. And then on a Tuesday you wax the person who was your shining example of like oh, whoa, you did a muscle up or you did whatever. It's like, you did, did you just do three burpees in a minute? Are you okay? Like, <laughs> like there's so many pieces to it. Yeah. There's so many parts to it. Even the community aspect. Like I look up to this person who is in last place in the leaderboard every day because they come in and they have a good time. Yeah. And like, they're clearly changing their life. So there's so many pieces where I think like the computer, the, the human mind can be brought into the equation like at odds with the monkey mind on different days. And sure. that's when you realize that you have potentially have control over the situation. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I think that's probably uh, the best I can do for an intro to this topic. Um, I think it'd be cool to, to explore. Like 52 bit. more hours remain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, to do that. But, but it is kind of fascinating that you have, this is like someone else in there that's just like, stay alive, stay alive. What's your, what are your thoughts on athlete who says to themselves, I'm going to like, I'm going to kind of try hard in this first attempt and then I'm going to get after it in the second attempt. Or, you know, maybe I'm going to, I'm only going to do half the workout today and then like, you know, that way I know how it feels and then I'm going to get after it. Any thoughts on, on athletes who take that approach? Yeah, I think I think the idea of of being embarrassed and being banished from the tribe and feeling like you're not like going to do well enough is a powerful part of the chimp brain. And if I go out there and say I'm not going to do well on purpose, then I have an excuse for yeah. what's there. I'm going in and protecting myself and doing that. Um shit happens in workouts your camera shuts off you fucking someone tells you the wrong rep scheme like and in those instances you're like i did 400 wall balls this weekend i'm gonna die like you don't want to do that to yourself intentionally right you want to be well rested and hydrated and fueled and in the right mindset and surrounded by the right people and just go fucking attack the workout and get after it and like almost every crossfit workout starts out with like below threshold levels of pain and pushing your body to places it can't get to, to like flirting with that line, going over it, going back under it, back and forth. Like the expectation of what these things are shouldn't be that crazy. Like you've done enough of them. If you're doing an online qualifier, you've done every version, yeah. of every workout and every pain cave. And like, yeah, like, Recently, we did those fucking bike sprints, and I felt like someone stabbed me in the leg 6,000 times. But it's also, like, not any worse than when you do your first running workout, like, late in the fall, and it feels like your lungs turn into hamburger. Yeah. <laughs> They're just different, right? Yeah. Like, the, these, the, the different stimuli are just, just sort of different there. And then there are some workouts that are so hard that you can't even reach a high level of intensity. And that's a different level of discomfort. Maybe it's mental. So you guys have all been through all of these things. Um, but you know, some people listen to this podcast. A lot of our, a lot of our gym members listen to this podcast and these are just ways to like, remember that we're not just tackling fitness when we come in here. 
there's something sort of bigger at play. But if we can learn to quiet that part of our brain down a little bit in here, there's a pretty good chance you're going to be able to learn how to do it outside of the gym as well, which is cool. Yeah, I think my my last thoughts on the topic are just like accumul like paying your dues as far as accumulating your you know your days, months, days, weeks, months, and years of training time. Like the more that you do, you come in, you just take class it's it's monday like i take class on monday or it's it's monday like you know I, I it's 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 having a routine it's committing to like training regardless of how you feel it's the like what do you do when you when you don't feel like training it's like i go, I go to the gym and i train like, it has to be part of your routine in order for you to get to a place where like we can stop worrying about like where it's less about like actual anxiety and more about like, well, we just need to figure out the the nuts and bolts of what this workout is actually telling us from, you know, in the, like an online qualifier. What is this at workout actually asking of us? What, how many reps are you probably going to do? Like once, once we start to fill in the blanks of those unknowns, like that sort of thing becomes a lot more comfortable. But the baseline for that is getting enough reps in as far like train just training it's it's putting in enough hours it's doing enough different styles of workouts it's learning how to go hard medium slow whatever and and that just comes with time and the more that we do that the less surprising like i don't really get nervous as much for the open anymore because i've done enough like done a zillion wall balls dumbbell snatches like for better or worse there's a finite number of movements they're going to ask us to do in the open like there is a there are constraints to online qualifiers that say like, hey, you know, these are the movements that are probably going to happen. You've done so many of them before that, like, it's just a matter of how the programmer is going to is going to move these move the numbers and the movements and the weights around in the workout. So get your reps in. Yeah, I think to to piggyback on that a little bit for my final thoughts there's another thing that we've been talking about for like a decade that fits so well into this model is that the best athletes in the world sit around after the workout and talk to each other about the details of the workout. Mm. And it's like, oh, you could be a 20 round workout. And they're like, round six, I, I switched over to seven, five, three. And that was like the perfect way to break up the reps. And you're just like, what, what, how do you remember that? How do you know that? And it's like, they are feeding the computer information over and over and over, and that's the thing that gets to, to take over. It's the only way that we're going to override panicking. And there are other athletes who have put in 20,000 hours that walk out of the gym, and it's like not, they don't know what happened. They don't know what pace they held. They didn't do, take do, do. any notes. They're like, what, what the fuck is going on? And then when it comes to those critical moments of like panic or execute, yeah. Like, Who's going to win in those things, regardless of genetics, fitness level, skill level, strength, et cetera. Like that's something where you can make a huge change there. So um, final thoughts would definitely be let your human brain deliver and log way more information into the computer. Um, that is that is something that will be incredibly helpful to you when shit hits the fan. So much easier to be a smart athlete than a dumb one. For real. Seriously. Did we do it? We did it. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Misfit Podcast, misfitathletics.com for your individual programming needs, teammisfit.com for the Sugar Wad Marketplace for your affiliate programming needs. See you next week. Later. Later.